your mighty name, Lord, and we ask that you be with us. And Lord, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our sins and heal those that are in sickness, Lord. We know that you are powerful. We know that uh, there's people here that can testify that they've been healed, Lord. And we thank you because you are the master physician, Lord. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Feliz Sábado. I know we got some bilingual speaking people here. <laughs> well, welcome, Sister uh, Deborah. Welcome, Sister Cynthia. My wife, Leanne. Brother Tay. And we know that those that are watching online and, and those that will be coming here here in a minute. Amen. God is so good to us. God is so amazing. Uh, so... We are to uh, just praise the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, we do go online every Saturday. So for those watching, we pray. I pray that um, you guys follow along with the word of God. Amen. Amen. We have extra Bibles around here if anybody doesn't have one. But um, we're going to present this three-part series. And last Saturday was the first part. This Saturday is part two. And then next Saturday is part three. So if you missed last Saturday's, just go to our Facebook page, uh, Christian Lighthouse uh, Church, and uh, be sure to watch part one. And I know that Brother Tay also puts it on YouTube, so check out his YouTube page. Uh, what is the page called, Brother? Truth vs. Propaganda. Truth vs. Propaganda. propaganda. All right. All right, so it's all there for us to, to go back and review it, amen? Um, at this time, if anybody has an offering or a tithe, um, you can just bring it up here by where Brother Tate's at and just drop it in the offering plate. If you don't have anything, it's okay. It's all right. Don't, we're, that's not why we're here for, amen? We're just here to, um, we want to be here to present God's Word. And fellowship. The Bible says don't neglect the uh, fellowship of the saints. Amen. So we come together. We're not fearful. We trust in, the, in God. Amen. 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 Just a few announcements as anybody that's bringing the offerings to the plate right here. Uh, we, I don't know if y'all noticed the flag up there. I don't know if y'all noticed the flag up there in the front. And... Um, we, uh, so with the offerings that you guys gave, we were able to purchase, we were able to purchase that, um, that flag. We want to try to let people know that we have church on Saturday. Amen. Amen. All right. My wife had to remind me, I forget that I need to turn that off. <laughs> Amen. All right, let us pray for our, uh, uh, the offerings that were returned and the tithes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this money that was given and returned, Lord. We pray that it is used for your use, Lord, and that it may reach others. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We usually have a children's story. We usually have children's church, but we don't have any children today. <laughs> Amen. But it's okay. All right, I guess we can go ahead and jump right into the message for today. Right over there, sister. All right. The message today is entitled, Who is the Antichrist? And who are these four beasts? And who is the little horn? Amen? It's a lot to cover, but God willing, God will give me the words to speak this morning. And God will allow us to dive into the Word of God and understand these prophecies. Amen? Amen? So much guessing about who the Antichrist is. We see all these images up here and sometimes it can be overwhelming, right? Last Saturday we studied about this man of four metals, right? We studied about this vision that was given to Daniel in Daniel chapter 2. You can study it. And it's got the head of gold, silver, bronze, iron, and then the toes of partly clay and partly iron. Amen? So we were able to study that gold represented Babylon. We were able to study that silver represented uh, Middle Persia. 
and then the bronze represented Greece, and then the legs represented Rome. And it, it, God is always accurate, amen? God is accurate because Rome was not conquered by another world ruling kingdom, but rather it was divided into ten kingdoms, which are ten toes on the image, which makes modern Europe today, amen? And then the Bible says that a rock came out of nowhere. And this rock struck the image of the feet and destroyed the whole image. And then the kingdom of God was set up. Amen. Meaning that rock represented Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came during the time of the European nations, that is in our time, right? Did we exist back in Babylon? Did we exist back in the Middle Persian Empire? Did we exist back in the Greece Empire or in Rome? Rome is when Jesus Christ was crucified. Jesus Christ was, uh, was crucified on a Roman cross. But we exist today in the, during the European nations. Amen? The ten toes which makes modern Europe today. But today we're going to cover these four beasts that are on this side. Last Sabbath we covered on the four medals and the dream that was given to Nebuchadnezzar. And what they all each represented. Mm -hmm. This time we're going to cover these four beasts. And we're going to go into a little bit more detail this Saturday. Amen. God is so good. You know, this, be this first beast is the same thing as this metal over here. The second beast is the same thing as this side. And, and, forward, and so forth. This fourth beast has ten horns. Just like the ten toes. On the statue. But we'll go ahead and uh, dive into the message. Amen. So I just wanted to present that to you guys. So you guys can be aware. How the metals are the same thing as those four beasts on there. So much guessing of who the Antichrist is. Would it be fair if God tells us. Don't receive the mark of the beast. But, but he wouldn't tell us who the Antichrist is. Would it be fair? I don't think so right. So let us read about this Antichrist system in the book of Revelation, chapter 14. We're going to be in the book of Revelation, and we're, we're going to be in the book of Daniel. We're going to go back and forth, okay? Revelation, chapter 14. Revelation, chapter 14, verse 9 through 10. This is a description... Or not a description, but this is telling us about the Antichrist in the last days. Alright? Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 through 10. And it says, Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out with full strength into the cup of his indignation and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Amen? Yeah. Here God is telling us, or John the Revelator is telling us, if you receive the mark of this beast or the image of the beast, you will be tormented with fire and brimstone. That's pretty serious, right, Brother Tim? Yeah. That's a serious warning. We don't want to receive the mark of this beast or the of his image, right? right. You know, um, I have a, I put some pictures up here. And I'm thankful to my wife. She came up with this idea. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take credit for it. I'll give the credit to my wife. <laughs> but uh, this is a picture of Daniel when Nebuchadnezzar uh, was telling Daniel his dream, and that's the dream that we talked about last last uh, Saturday. This is John, the Revelator. He's the one that book, wrote the book of Revelation, all right? So we're going to be talking about Daniel and John. When we're talking about in the book of Revelation, it was John that wrote it. When we're talking in the book of Daniel, obviously it was Daniel that wrote it, right? We're going to be talking about this Antichrist system right here. This is the Antichrist right here. But we'll go into detail here in a minute. All right. And next Saturday, 
we will cover on this image right here and these two images right there. And God will show us through the Word of God how this prophecy comes to be fulfilled. Amen? God is not the author of confusion. You know, God will always tell us His truth through the Word of God. So much guessing in prophecy. People always say, well, it's Russia against China, or it's the Middle East, or it's all these things, right? But let's go to the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 through 21. A few pages back before mm -hmm. Revelation, 2 Peter chapter 1, 19 through 21. All right. And it says, And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Her prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So it's the Holy Spirit that, that uh, was inspired men. It says holy men. But there were people like me and you. Amen? They were just... They were just dedicated in serving the Lord. Amen. They surrendered their lives to God. And God used them to write these prophecies in the book of Daniel, in the book of Revelation, and other books in the Bible. Amen. Amen. It's so amazing. Uh, so these prophecies, these beasts, and these metals, it's all in the Bible. I didn't come up with these pictures on my own. Amen. All these pictures are described in the Bible. Either in the book of Daniel or in the book of Revelation. This is what the Antichrist looks like. Revelation chapter 13, 1 through 3. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 13, 1 through 3. Then I stood in the sand of the sea. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And on his horns ten crowns, and on his head blasphemous name. And on the beast I saw if it was... Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. Amen? This is a description of the Antichrist. All right? And it said, I saw one of his heads as it had been mortally wounded, and this deadly wound was healed. And the whole world marveled and followed the beast. When we think of the word beast, it sounds scary, right? But you know what? This is all symbolic. This is not going to be a literal animal that comes out in the last days, right? It tells us that it has seven heads. And ten horns. This is the Antichrist right here. It says it has mouth like a lion. It says it has feet like a bear and a body of a leopard. Right? That is the description of the Antichrist. And it says it comes out of the water or out of the sea. It's a lot to receive in, but remember that. This animal, this Antichrist system is made of four different animals. Four different parts of an animal, right? And it's got ten horns and seven heads. Let us remember that. All right, Revelation 7, 17, 15. Revelation 17, 15. Then I, and then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So the water or the sea represents a multitude of people. This Antichrist system is going to come out where there's tons of people. Amen? So the Bible gives us interpretation. We don't need to guess, right? We don't need to guess. What does the rest of the image mean? We go to the book of Daniel. Daniel and Revelation go hand in hand. 
Y'all remember last Saturday, the image of gold, silver, brass, and iron. This is the same thing. We're now we're going to talk about these four beasts next to this image. All right? Y'all got to y'all got to realize though something. Daniel and John didn't know each other, right? It was a uh, amount of time, an amount of years separate. They didn't they were in two different uh um time periods. I'm not sure the difference on the how many years it was, but the book of Daniel was written uh, during the time of Babylon, right? The book of Revelation was written uh, during the time of Rome. But yet, what Daniel says, John says. What John says, Daniel says, right? Let's go to Daniel chapter 7. Chapter uh Chapter 7, verse 2 to 3. This is in the Old Testament, right? Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 2 to 3. Daniel spoke, saying, I saw in the visions by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens were stirring up the great sea. And four great beasts came out from the sea, each different from the other. All right? So here Daniel has a, a vision of four beasts. It's the same thing as the four meadows on this poster. Daniel was given a vision of these four beasts. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, then Rome. Daniel, or Nebuchadnezzar, also had this dream. Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, and Rome. And then the ten toes, which makes Europe. And the ten horns, which makes Europe. So let us keep that in mind. As Daniel's receiving this vision, he has a dream. Have you ever had a dream and you wonder if it means something, right? Well, Daniel has this dream of these four beasts. And we're going to talk about these four beasts. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, 17. Daniel 7, 17 says, Those great beasts which are the four are four kings which arise out of the earth. Amen? And then Daniel 7, 23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on the earth which shall be different from all the other kingdoms. So a beast represents a kingdom and a king, right? So every time you are reading the, these prophecies in the Bible, every, every time you're studying these prophecies in the Bible about beasts, don't get caught up so much on the images. Don't get so caught up on the, the way these beasts look like, right? They're symbolic. You know, Nebuchadnezzar had the dream of the statue because he saw these kingdoms as a wonderful thing, right? He saw them as a wonderful thing. But we got to understand that these kingdoms were pagan, wanted nothing to do with God. They all were all pagan worshipers and they worshiped false gods, right? But Nebuchadnezzar didn't believe in God. He came to believe in God and he, he came to accept God as his personal savior. But they didn't believe in God. So when Nebuchadnezzar had this dream of the statue, he saw them as a wonderful thing. That's why he saw them as gold, silver, bronze, iron, right? But when God gives uh, Daniel the dream of the four beasts, it's the same thing. But God sees these nations or these kingdoms as evil. That's why God describes them as beasts. So if you go today to the Middle East and you go to the ancient ruins of Babylon, you will see winged lions painted on their, on their, on their walls. 
straight what the Bible says. Amen? So who is this first beast? Who is this first beast right here out of these four beasts? Let's go to the Bible. Daniel chapter 7 verse 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings and I watched till his wings were plucked off and I was lifted up from the earth and made a stand to my feet like a man and a man's heart was given to it. This first beast is described as a lion with wings, right? This is the vision that God has given Daniel. This first beast is a, is a winged lion which represents Babylon. Amen? Which is the second beast? Daniel 7, 5. And suddenly another beast, a second like a bear, was raised up on one side and had three ribs on his mouth between the teeth. And they said thus to it, Arise and devour much flesh. The second beast is the Medo-Persia. Because I believe the Medes were stronger than the Persians. Or the other way around, I can't remember. That's why this bear is seen standing on one foot, lifting one foot above the other one. Right? The prophecies, the Persians, I'm sorry, the Persians were stronger than the Medes. So these three ribs on the bear represent the three areas that it conquered, which was Libya, Egypt and Lydia. Those are the three little kingdoms that the Medes and the Persians controlled, right? So the first, the first beast out of these four beasts is Babylon, the winged lion, right? The second beast is a bear with three ribs on his mouth. As we read in Daniel chapter 7 verse 5. Which one is the third beast? Let's go to Daniel 7, verse 6. All right, Daniel chapter 7, verse 6. After this, I looked, and there was another, like a leopard, which had on his back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. Right? This third beast is none other than Greece. It had four wings. The reason because this kingdom came and went so quick. This kingdom of Greece. And the ruler of this kingdom of Greece was Alexander the Great. For those that love history, go check it out. It will tell you that the ruler of Greece was Alexander the Great. But why does this leopard have four heads? We're talking about these four beasts right here next to the to the statue. Why did the leopard have four heads? Because Alexander the Great had conquered everything. He got bored. He became an alcoholic. And he drank himself to death. But before dying, you know, when you're a king and you know that you want somebody else to take over your kingdom, you appoint somebody, right? He didn't appoint anybody. So when he died, his four generals took over the kingdom. That's why this leopard has four heads. Greece is the representation of this third beast on this image of the leopard with four heads. The four heads are the four generals of Alexander the Great. Isn't that crazy? What about the fourth beast? What does God say about the fourth beast? Daniel chapter 7, verse 7. After this I saw in the night vision, and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, and trampling the residue of its feet. It was different from all the other beasts that it were before it. And it had ten horns. Man, God goes into much detail about this fourth beast, right? 
They don't even have a name for this animal. It just calls it a terrible beast. Right? The Bible calls it a terrible beast. Babylon is the winged lion. Medo-Persia is the bear raised on one foot with the three ribs on his mouth, which conquered uh, Egypt, Libya, and uh, Libya, I believe. The third beast is a leopard with four heads and four wings, the four generals of Alexander the Great. And then the Bible says the fourth beast was terrible. It was the longest ruling empire, right? It says it would devour everything that it came across. The Romans would kill the Christians, right? They would persecute God's people. You have the Roman Colosseums where they would kill Christians. They would kill believers and Jewish people too. It says it has ten horns. Right here they put an image of a dinosaur. I don't know why. <laughs> but the Bible says it's an undescripted beast. It had ten horns. And this is the fourth beast, which is Rome. It ruled from 168 B.C., before Christ, all the way to 476 after Christ. Longest ruling kingdom. Remember, a beast represents what? A kingdom. Those four medals represent... A kingdom. The feet, the statue had ten, uh, ten toes. The fourth beast down there has ten horns. Those ten horns is Europe divided. Or Rome divided into Europe. The ten toes on the statue is Europe as well. Amen? What were those ten kingdoms that makes Europe today? They have fancy words for it, but next to the name I will explain what those ten toes are or those ten horns are in the book of Daniel chapter 2 or in the book of Daniel chapter 7. Let's first read Daniel chapter 7 verse 24. The ten horns are ten kings which shall arise from the kingdom, and another shall arise from them. And he shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. What does it mean, subdue? It means destroy three kings. Alright? So meaning, there's going to be ten kingdoms that come out of the fourth beast. There's going to be ten kingdoms that come out of that statue, which is the ten toes. But in the process, three of those kingdoms will be destroyed. Three of those little kingdoms in Europe. It shall subdue three kings. It shall destroy three kings. These ten kingdoms are the alum, Alumni, which is the Germans. The Burgundian, which is the Swiss. The Franks, which is the French. The Lombardi, which is the Italians. The Anglo-Saxon, which is the English. The Suave, which is the Portuguese. The Visigoths, which is the Spanish. And the three kingdoms that were destroyed is the Herali, Vandals, and Ostrogoth. You can read it about it in your uh, history books. These three little kingdoms were destroyed by Rome. Right? Rome was divided into ten kingdoms which makes Europe today. You had Babylon, you had Medo-Persia, you had Greece, then you had Rome. I think Leanne's calling all the kids to go back there. She's got a project for you guys. Amen. All right. So Rome was divided into 10 kingdoms. I'm just kind of repeating this over and over because I want us to understand this, this, these symbols. Amen? Rome was divided into ten kingdoms, really which there's only seven now. That's why the Antichrist system says it has seven heads because three of them were destroyed. Right? But let's go into Daniel chapter 7 verse 8. 
this is where we're going to focus more on. We're not going to focus so much on these four beasts. We're not going to focus so much on those four metals. But we're going to focus what happens during those ten kingdoms. Or those ten... Um, those ten horns, right? Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. Check it out. I was considering the horns. This is, a da this is Daniel in vision, right? He was looking at those ten horns on that fourth beast. Okay? I was considering the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up among them, before the three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots, and the and there is in and there in this horn were the eyes like the eyes of a man, and the mouth speaking blasphemous words or pompous words. All right. It talks about a little horn. It talks about a little horn coming out in the middle of these ten horns. When this little horn comes out, it destroys three of the horns in Europe. Okay? This little horn is this right here. This little horn comes out and destroys three of the kingdoms and only leaves seven. Alright? And the Bible says they had eyes of a man and it spoke blasphemous words. What does it mean, blasphemous words, right? So we're going to focus on this right here. We're focusing on the ten horns of Rome, which was divided into Europe. And in the middle of those ten horns, a little horn came out, destroyed three kingdoms, and it became this little horn right here. All right? This is powerful, amen? It is powerful. Daniel is saying, I was looking at the ten horns, the French, the Italians, the Spanish, the Portuguese. In the middle of all those kingdoms, I see a little kingdom. Remember, horns and beasts represent kingdoms. He said, I saw a little horn come out. I saw a little kingdom come out in the middle of Europe, in the middle of Rome, right? And it destroyed three kingdoms as it came out. This is in modern Europe, right? The little horn has the eyes of a man speaking pompous words or blasphemy. Who is this little horn? The amazing thing is this little horn is the Antichrist of Revelation 13. That God says don't worship and don't receive the mark of it. This little horn, I know it's a lot to, to remember. This little horn turns into this beast of Revelation chapter 13. Y'all got to understand, all these four beasts are in Daniel, not in Revelation. This is in the past, right? All these four kingdoms, all these four beasts are in the book of Daniel during the time of Babylon, during this time when he received the vision. In the book of Revelation, for those that came in late, this is in Revelation chapter 13. It talks about the Antichrist beast. But check it out. It has the face of a lion of this first beast. It has the body of a leopard of this beast. Right? It has the feet of a bear of this beast. It has the, the ten horns of this beast. This is in the book of Revelation. This is in the book of Daniel. Right? This little horn that came out of this beast right here, this little horn turns into this beast. The Antichrist system. Alright? It's powerful. I know it's a lot to capture. It's a lot to capture. Let's go through the ten steps of this little horn. Alright? Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. I just read that. I was considering the horns. 
Sorry, it's because the lighting's pretty dark over here. I was considering the, the horns, and there was another horn, a little one, coming up amongst them before the three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And there in the, is this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and mouth speaking pompous words or blasphemous words. Amen? It says, among them, among the ten European nations, after 476 A.D. It had to be after 476 A.D. Because when did Rome uh, was divided into ten kingdoms? It had to be after 476 A.D. It couldn't be during the time of the Middle Persians. It couldn't be during the time of Greece. It had to be during the time of Rome, right? Because the, 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 it was, that's when Rome was divided. Then chapter eight, 7 verse 8 also says it was a little kingdom, very small, but it conquered all these European nations, right? Verse 8 also says this kingdom has the eyes of a man, a man that rules this little kingdom and speaks pompous words. This little kingdom has a man in charge of it, right? This little kingdom speaks blasphemy against God's people, amen? Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 24. And the ten horns of ten kings which shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall arise from them, and it shall be different from the first ones, and shall destroy three kings, or subdue three kings. Meaning this little kingdom is different from all the other kingdoms. It has its own government. It has its own laws. And everyone is to follow what this little kingdom has. Daniel chapter 7 verse 25. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, or blasphemy against the Most High. What is blasphemy? What does it mean to blasph blasphemy God? Well, there's two definitions of blasphemy in the book of John and in the book of Mark. Let's go to John chapter 10, but keep it marked right here in Daniel because we're going to come back. Let's go to John chapter 10, verse 30 to 33. I mean, uh, John chapter 10, verse... Yeah, 30 to 33. It says, And I and, the fa I and the Father are one. This is Jesus talking. Then the Jews took up stones against, again to stone him. Jesus answered to them, Many good works have I shown you, from my father, for I, which of, which of those works do you stone me? Then the Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you, being a man, made yourself God. A definition for blasphemy, anyone claiming to be God. Of course, Jesus could be claimed, he could claim to be God, because he was God, right? But for any man to say that they are God, that's blasphemy. Amen? So that's one definition of blasphemy. What's another definition for blasphemy? Let's go to Mark chapter 2, verse 5. Let's go to Mark chapter 2. Verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the par paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their heart, Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sons, sins but God alone? So anyone claiming to be able to forgive your sins 
is speaking blasphemies. Right? We know that only God can forgive your sins. We know that God can only say He's God. Right? But if a man says, I can forgive your sins, you're speaking blasphemy. Or if you say you are a God, you're speaking blasphemy. All right? But of course, Jesus was able to forgive sins, right? Because he was God. But with that said, it says that this kingdom, this little horn, would speak blasphemy. So this little kingdom with the eyes of a man, with the, with the man controlling this kingdom, I mean, with that said, you, kind of, you guys already kind of know who this little horn is, right? It says, we'll be able, we'll say that I can forgive your sins and that I am God's represented here on earth, right? Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, it says, we'll persecute God's people. It would kill many Christians throughout history, right? Rome would kill Christians. Y'all remember Paul would kill Christians before he converted? Under the guidance of Rome, but also under the guidance of the Jewish leaders. I don't know if y'all knew that. That was church and state coming together to persecute God's people. It will happen the same in our time. In the last days, the church and state when I say state, I'm not talking about the state of Texas or the state of California. When I say state, it means government. Church and government will come together to persecute God's true Christian, uh, believers. Amen? Just as they did during the time of Rome. Right? Rome was pagan. They didn't worship God. They didn't want nothing to do with God. But Rome, the more they would persecute God's people, the more they would torture them and burn them at the stake, the more Christians were willing to die for Jesus. So Christianity exploded. If you read it in the book of Acts, it says people were being baptized into the church daily by the thousands, right? Christianity exploded. It became big, right? So Rome... With time and time, they notice the more we kill Christians, the more they're willing to die for Christianity. So Rome had to come up with something else. Rome said, I will come up with my own church. My own Christian church. That's what happens when we're not guided by the Holy Spirit. And we want to start... And we want to serve God in our way, not the way God expects us to follow Him, right? So Constantine, remember this name, Constantine. Leader, one of the leaders of Rome said, I will start my own Christian church. And it will be called the Roman church, right? This is during the time of Rome. The fourth beast, right there. I will start my own Christian church. And I'll call it the Roman church. You got to understand back in those days, the Christians and the Jewish people worshipped in simple synagogues. Rome was the government. Rome said, I will build all these fancy cathedrals, all these fancy churches to attract God's people into the, into the buildings. That was one thing he did, Constantine. And, and many of them did leave the, the simple churches and, and came to the Roman church. But there was, y'all gonna understand from Genesis to Revelation, they all were they all held services on the Sabbath, right? Rome worshiped the sun. So he introduced Sunday services. But if I was to come to you and say, all right, you know, I know that the Bible says this, but I want you to do this now. Would you listen to me? No. So he had to come up with this deception. He had to come up with a lie, right? He said, you know what? I know that Jesus rose from the grave on Sunday. 
So let us also celebrate on Sunday in honor of the resurrection. But does the Bible say that? No. That was the words of Constantine. Yes, the Bible does say that Jesus rose on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. But he never said, change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. You see how this fourth beast of Rome, they did all these things. That's why the Bible describes this fourth beast as terrible. It would do terrible things, right? It would mix Christianity with paganism. They would allow uh, worship of statues, right? The, gods and the false gods and everything. They would rename the statue of Jupiter to the statue of Peter, which is in the Vatican today. They have all these false gods, right? And then Constantine passed a law. He said, Yes, we can keep the Sabbath on Saturday still, but let's also keep Sunday holy. But what we're going to do is, everyone is required by law to fast on the Sabbath and feast on Sunday. He was telling everyone, don't eat no food on the Sabbath, but on Sunday we're all going to have a big party and we're going to eat. We're going to celebrate. Is there anything wrong with fasting? No. The Bible says for us to fast. And that's how a lot of these people got sucked into doing these things. They said, well, we don't mind fasting. But when, when the law passes laws for, for Christianity or, or what we should do, that's when we should want nothing to do with it, right? So, little by little, God's people got bored of the Sabbath. They got bored of the Sabbath because they couldn't eat on that day. And on Sunday, they could celebrate. They could eat all they wanted to. Amen? And Constantine got God's people to switch over little by little and say, we don't want nothing to do with the Sabbath. And we, we accept Sunday now, and now they're in these big, big, fancy churches. Don't we see that today? People rather go to this big, attractive churches today, right? People rather go where all the entertainment is going on, all the good praise and worship music is going on. I mean, some of the praise and worship bands in these churches, are they're amazing, right? There's nothing wrong with them, but we're more to be more focused on God's truth. Even if the church you go to there's only five people in that church. But they're preaching out of the Word of God. Stick to that church. Amen? I know I got off a little bit <laughs> on my study. But um, that's what happened during the time of Rome, right? It said it would persecute God's people. But later on, Rome actually started their own Christian church. Rome later on couldn't handle everything on their own. Constantine, one man can't handle everything by himself. So he had to appoint popes, the first pope. And then, of course, the second pope, and so on. And to this day, I don't know how many popes we have, right? Most of you already know who this little horn is, right? It's none other than the Vatican. The Vatican has its own laws. Did you know that? His, the Vatican has its own government. That's why it's called the Roman Catholic Church. Because it came from Rome. Right? Now, I'm saying this with much love and much respect. I love my brothers and sisters in the Catholic Church. This is not an attack on God's pe or people of God. Amen? This is an attack on what's going on behind the scenes. Amen? As I, as I covered this uh, sermon uh, many, many Sabbaths ago, come out of Babylon, right? 
God is wanting us to come out of these false systems. All these false systems that are uh, going against God, right? And the more we open our eyes, the more we study God's word, we're able to see what his truth is, amen? I want to follow God's truth no matter what. This little horn becomes the Antichrist. The image right below it, right? We just read in Daniel chapter 7, verse 8, among them came in the middle of Europe, actually in Italy, Rome. After 476 AD, pagan Rome became papal Rome in 538 AD. Justinian being the first pope. The little horn is small. It has 109 acres. The Vatican, but it's the wealthiest kingdom in the world. Did you know that? It killed three of the first kingdoms, the Herlite, Vandals, and Visigoths. All you got to do is go to your history books, and you will see that the Roman Empire destroyed these three kingdoms. As a visible man, or the eyes of a man, which is the Pope, right? That's what this little horn is. Daniel 7, 24 says it is different. The Vatican has its own laws. No one tells them what to do. Did you know that? We are here in the United States and we have to respect the laws of the land, right? You go to Spain, you have to respect their laws. You go to any European nation over there in Europe, you got to respect their laws, right? But nobody tells the Vatican what to do. They have their own law. Why would it have its own law? Daniel 7, 25, it says that it would speak blasphemy. What little kingdom claims to be able to forgive your sins and claims to be God here on earth? It's the Vatican, right? With the Pope as his head. There is many references as the they call, what do they call the Pope? Father. They call him Father. Right? Is he our Heavenly Father? No. We have our Heavenly Father, Abba, right? Elohim. Amen? Amen. That is our Father. That is our true Father. Amen? Amen. So why would we call the Pope Father? Because many people believe he is God here on earth. Through the Catholic system, they say they can forgive your sins. Only God can forgive your sins. Amen? So this little horn says he, it speaks blasphemy. Amen? It would persecute the saints or God's people. We are here in America. You know why we're here in the United States? Do you know why the pilgrims came here? Freedom. Because they were tired of the Roman rule over them. They were tired of the Catholic system and the Roman system in their lives over there in Europe. So they said we must find a land of freedom. And they came here to the United States. This was considered a uh, Christian nation first. And we'll cover that next week. But they call him Holy Father, right? Which is crazy. During the Dark Ages, it killed a lot of Christians. The Colosseums, the ones that look like the that looks like the football stadiums, the Colosseums in Rome, they would put. Christians that went against Rome and they would release lions to devour those families. It's crazy. That's why God calls this fourth beast a terrible beast. Daniel 7.25 Daniel 7.25 It shall speak pompous words against the Most High or blasphemous words against the Most High shall persecute the saints of the Most High and shall intend 
to change times and law. Then the same shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half of time. What does it mean it shall intend to change times and laws? Did you know that in the book of Genesis, it says that the next day begins at sunset. So why does the next day begin at midnight? Rome did that change. That's why we keep the Sabbath from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, right? But Rome made that change too. We changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Constantine. Then later on, when the Catholic Church came out of Rome, they made it law that the new Sabbath was on Sunday. There's a book called, there's a book called, um, the, what's the, man, it slipped out of my mind, uh, with the, the catechism, Catholic catechism. All you have to do is go to any Catholic store, go buy you a Converse Catholic catechism. This is the teachings or the doctrine of what the Catholic Church believes in, right? And in that book, it will tell you all these things that I'm telling you. They will say, the Pope is here, is God here on earth. I'm not making it up. I have that book myself. I was baptized. I'm, I was baptized into the Catholic Church, but I also did my first communion. And they gave me that book. Yes. And in that book, it tells us to pray to the saints, to pray to the Virgin Mary, right? Yep. And many more things. And in that book, it also says God gave the Catholic Church permission to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Y'all don't believe me? Go buy that book or borrow that book. Catholics, Catechism, uh, catechism Converse Catechism. The older it is, the better, because the nearer revi they're revising them and they're leaving a lot of these things out. So if you can find an older one, it's better. It's all prophesied. It said it would rule for half a time, times, and half a time for 1,260 years, 42 months, right? Remember the little horn in Daniel? It is the same, it becomes the Antichrist system. Let's go to Revelation 13, verse 5. Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. We're almost towards the end of this study. But y'all don't want to miss next week because we're going to do part 3 of this prophetic study. Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Didn't we just read that in the book of Daniel? This is now in the book of Revelation. It's the same thing. That's why this little horn is the same as this beast. And was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. Right? But let's continue to read verse 7 and 8. Revelation 13, 7 and 8. And it was granted to him to make war with the saints and overcome them. And authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. And those who dwell on the earth to worship whose names were were not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. This is the Antichrist. The same little horn that we read, the Vatican with the man as the head, right? Speaking blasphemous words. It's also found here in the book of Revelation. Hundreds and thousands of years later, right? Or hundreds of years later, right? Revelation 13, verse 
18. Here's wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. When a pope is crowned to be pope, there's a title that is given to him, which is in Latin. It's called Vicarious Filii Dei. If you add each of those letters in Roman numeral, they come out to 666. God knew what he was talking about, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes us, sometimes us here today, we say, well, I'm not Catholic, or I don't, I don't agree with the Vatican, right? A lot of us might feel comfortable at this point and say, well, I'm okay, because I'm not, I'm not any of those things, right? But did you know, and we will study this next Saturday, did you know that this Antichrist beast right here, under the little horn, which is the Antichrist, the Bible talks about a woman riding this beast. Y'all see the woman riding the beast right there? We will cover that next Saturday. A woman represents a church. But the Bible says, that this woman or this harlot or this prostitute has daughters. Right? Yep. So it's not just the Catholic system that's the Antichrist. But it's also the church is connected with this system. It's popular Christianity in the last days. Right? So it's for everyone, the Bible says that the whole world marveled after the beast. Or wondered after the beast. Meaning, not just Catholics, but also Protestants, Christians, non-denominational. It don't matter what title we put ourselves, right? We have all these titles, Seventh-day Adventists, Baptists, Pentecostal, non-denominational. If you don't follow God's word and what the Holy Spirit has for us, then you're following this system. You're a daughter of the system. We don't want to be a daughter of the system, right? That's why I presented many Sabbaths ago, come out of Babylon, right? But it's symbolic, right? So let us not look down at our brothers that are in these churches. Instead, let's share the truth found in God's Word. They're human, right? Yes. A lot of these people are our relatives and our friends. Whether they be Catholic, whether they be Pentecostals, SDA, or whatever they are, non-denominational, we are to share God's truth from the Word of God. What God's truth is found in here, and these prophecies, how this Antichrist system we will see next Saturday will do its work in the last days, right? Mm -hmm. And we see some of those things happening today, right? Governments taking control in these last days. You know, we are to respect the government. Only when they don't pass laws, they go against God. Yeah. Well, the minute they start to pass laws, they go against God. Are you willing to stand up for Jesus Christ? Are you willing to follow God all the way? Even if they give you a thousand dollars every month? Right? That money was good, right? I ain't gonna lie. But they're teaching us, they're teaching us that we're gonna be alright if we trust them. That's what they're teaching us. But the one we should trust all the way is God. Jesus Christ, right? Follow God no matter what. Yes, respect the laws of the land. But the minute they start to pass laws against God, the minute they start telling you you can't have church anymore, you can't preach God's word anymore, are you going to follow them because you want a thousand dollars a month? No. I'm going to follow God. Amen? We are to follow God even if it means losing everything. 
Are you willing to lose houses and cars and all these things that we have? It's nice to have those things, but I don't want to gain the whole world and lose my own soul. Amen? Amen? That's what the Bible says. What profit a man to gain the whole world, but in the process loses his own soul? I don't want to lose my soul. I want to follow God all the way. Revelation, our last verse, our last uh, text. Revelation chapter 13, 1 through 3. Check it out. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and the heads were blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of the heads of it had been mortally wounded, and the deadly wound was healed, and the world marveled and followed the beast. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. Did y'all catch something right there? This is the Antichrist. As I said earlier, check it out. Four beasts. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome. Rome has ten horns. That's Europe. In the middle of the European nations, a little horn comes out, destroys the other, ten, the other three, right? So there's left with seven. This little horn becomes, is the Antichrist. We read in Revelation that this little horn is the same thing as we just read right now. This beast right here. But look, if y'all pay attention to this real quick, check this out. This is in Daniel. This is in Revelation. It has the mouth of a lion. The body of a leopard. The feet of a bear. The horns of the fourth beast. This is the Antichrist system made of these four kingdoms. And we will read next Saturday how a woman writes this beast. Amen? How a woman is in charge of this beast. How this woman is in charge of this Antichrist system. The word Antichrist means against God or in the place of God. Antichrist is a system with a man and his, as a head. Antichrist is not just a person. As many Christians believe today that in the last days this, this evil man will come out over there in um, Jerusalem, right? And all these crazy theories, right? But we will study next Saturday how this woman is in charge of this Antichrist beast. And then we will also talk about these two images down here. I'll give you a little hint. Check it out. Are these the same picture? Yes. No. no, they're not. This is the Vatican, and this is the White House. Little hint. We will talk about that next Saturday, so you guys do not want to miss it. But God is so amazing, you know. He gives us these prophecies so that we can have our faith built, right? Amen. So we can trust God and know what... So we can know that what He's saying will come to pass. Will really happen, right? It's kind of like you want to warn your children if they're going somewhere, right? Because you've been there before. You've been through all the, the things in life. When your kids become teenagers, if they're girls, you warn them about boys, right? <laughs> and then the boys, you warn them about the dangers of doing drugs or anything else, right? Because we've been through that. We've seen that. We know what it means. So you want to warn your children, right? God the Father does the same. God the Father does the same with us. He wants to warn us what's going to happen. But he's saying they're going to persecute you. They're going to go against you because you decide to follow God's truth. But God said, don't worry, I'm going to be right there in the middle with you. Right? He's going to walk with us all the way to his second coming. Amen? 
Y'all remember that stone that came out of nowhere and destroyed that image? That was the rock Jesus, right? Jesus' second coming destroyed all this evil mess that's going on right here. Yes, all, most of this is an evil representation of everything that the devil is using. The devil inspires governments. The, de the devil inspires leaders, right? But no matter how much the devil will attack us, God is more powerful. Because God made Lucifer, right? And God will destroy Lucifer in the last days and cast him into the lake of fire. Amen? I'm excited. I can't wait for that day because I'm tired of, you know, all the temptations and all the evil, all the people that are being murdered and the children that are being abused, right? Right? It makes me sad every time I hear a story like that. You know, for us, some of us, we face uh, medical problems, right? When Jesus comes back, there will be no more pain, no more dying, no more sorrow. Amen? Amen. It's going to be a wonderful place. Heaven will be a wonderful place. So I look forward to that. And I pray that this message has blessed you guys. Um, I know there's a lot more I left out. But if you didn't see last Saturday's message, go back and check it out. This is a three-part series. We studied about the medals. And today we studied about the four beasts and the little horn. And then that little horn became the Antichrist, right? Next Saturday we will talk about the woman riding the beast and those two images down on the bottom right. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for, for, this, for this message, Lord. Thank you for these prophecies that you give us. Help us to be blessed by them. Help our faith to grow. Help our faith to be strong and to trust in you no matter what, Lord. Be with each person as they go home today. Be with each person that's watching and open their eyes, Lord, to your truth. Amen. And Lord, uh, let us not be misguided, but rather what you have for us in, through your word, Lord. Thank you for giving us these prophecies. Thank you for giving us your Bible. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for viewing our videos. Hope this was for you and yours. Um, hopefully, please to like and subscribe to our videos and everything we have, every platform we have. Thank you. God bless.